What up, everybody? Before we get started with today's episode, I'd like to introduce you to our new sponsor, Studio. They are revolutionizing the way people see headphones. You know, they're not just making these pieces of equipment. These things are fashionable. They're stylish. You can put these things together in an outfit, an ensemble and everything, and you can wear them out on the town. And and that's something Mrs. B-Rob could appreciate because, you know, she's hip and trendy. She wears all the latest fashions and everything. And, you know, when you're dealing with a lot of fashion, you automatically think, you know, expensive. Studio is not that. They make high quality that's affordable for you and me. You know, I got a pair of region headphones. You know, they got like 24 hours worth of active battery life. So, I mean, you can run those things from the time you get up in the morning back to the next day and still have some oomph in there. So, I mean, I like them. Mrs. B-Rob likes them. And uh, we can be more happy to have the studio brand here represented on the Random Runs with Rob podcast. So if you go to studio.com and enter promo code 3 R show, you get 15% off your order. I, I couldn't be more excited to have the sponsor on the show. I couldn't be more excited to provide the savings on you on an already an affordable product. So head over to studio.com, get that 15% off, and get you some quality headphones. Beats are trash. Hey, what up, everybody? It's Hoppy. Getting back on the horse. I'll be back on Twitter after a while. Uh been a humbling last couple of months, I swear to God, uh, getting back in touch with everything and accepting, you know, had another failure with the film stuff and all that, but we're getting back on the horse and uh, I'll be back, got to stay relevant and get another thing filmed here uh, for too long, but I got a good story from Waverly TV Hospital, uh, if y'all don't know about that, it's one of the, it's on Ghost Hunters and Ghost, all them ghost shows all the time, it's in Louisville, it's an old TV hospital. Tons of people went there to die back in the day. It's creepy as fuck. It's a tourist attraction now. You can go and pay and get a tour and all that. But back when I was in high school, it was uh, it was just closed down and creepy as fuck. Like nobody, they, the owners paid security to be up there on the weekends and stuff to catch everybody going through it so they didn't get hurt. But, you know, nobody was supposed to be up there. Uh, cops would go through there all the time, all that. Well, you know. Of course, we in high school, we all decided we're going to go over and sneak in and look around all this shit. It's just, it's something little kids used to do. Now everybody's lame, you know, nobody does nothing no more. But, uh, so we took a group up there and we all agreed, if anybody gets, we, there was like 20 of us, and we all agreed, if anybody gets caught by the police or the security, we'll all stop because more than likely they ain't taking everybody to jail. So, you know, we just made a pact. So, we get up there, we creep up, there's a back way through the woods. Uh, you don't ever want to go up the main drive because there's always security or a cop posted there. Back in the day there was. So, uh, we creep in the back, get in the place. We didn't ever hear, or see nobody, so we thought we were straight. Toured the whole place. You know, there's an elevator shaft in there you can fall through. There's a, a, a fucking underground body shoot that goes down to the morgue and this motherfucker is creepy, bro. And when you're on a tour, it's different. You got somebody and you know you're safe. But, like, back then, you're going down a fucking tunnel this, this like, I don't know, football field's long and you don't know what the fuck's down there, you know. <laughs> so, anyway, we toured this whole place and we heading out. And uh, we think we're straight, so we're all kind of laughing and all that. Well, I'll look in the distance and there's a light and a not a light and a light and not a light. And it's it's somebody with a flashlight running at us. So I'm like, go, go, go. Well, of course, the fat kid gets caught. So we all stop. <laughs> and the cops give us a stern talking to, let us go. Say, if they see us up there again, ever again, they're taking us all to jail. So we get back down the bottom of the hill. We realize we ain't got two people. So there's a cop at the bingo hall. And I'm like, look, we done got busted by y'all for being up there, but we're missing two motherfuckers. And uh, we don't know where the fuck they at. Well, ended up when they was running from the cops, they, there was a side building, like an equipment sh- equipment building, or who the fuck knows what it was. But they hit their head on some iron that they didn't see, and both fell down in this goddamn ditch. And one of them was knocked out, and the other one had a huge gas on it. Uh, eventually, they got up, you know, and found their way back down. They got lost in the woods on the way back. And uh, it's creepy woods. It's like woods you can see through. There's not really a, no path, nowhere. It's just, it's, it's, and there's a huge hill, like like a, a steep-ass motherfucking hill. So uh, cops is up there looking around. Here come these dumbasses running down the railroad tracks. We get, you know, uh dude that had to cut to the, what you call it, the, the 
not the emergency room, but the media care center and uh, get him stitched up. And uh, it, We had a fun night, man. We toured that whole place. So if y'all ever in Kentucky, uh, you know, come for the Derby or something, man. Like you should, I know nobody in the country really fucks with the Kentucky Derby. I've lived other places and nobody fucking cares, but they accept celebrities. But like, seriously, y'all, like come to move, uh first Saturday in May, experience the Derby and go see Waverly Hills. I'm, I'm telling y'all, this is a fun town. Holla, y'all. Here we go. Anthem, you're ready for some random shit from Rob. Now everybody stand up and lift your arms. Put your hands in the sky like you're pinching stars. Go piss on Mars! What? It's so random, it's all gravy. The podcast is Rob's, yeah, go crazy. Yup. And all kind of shit like that. That's what Rob says when he runs off track. Fun fact, tuck that in your brain. Fuck that, nuts ass, we act insane. And the fast lane still smooth like butter. Rob, dude, you one cool ass brother. Motherfucker. You might hear that about every other word, but who's keeping cam? The ramblings get so random, what's happening? I'm babbling. So much you can't handle me, chattering teeth. Sound like a battle axe bashing the beat. Don't laugh when I speak, cause really, we're just some idiots. I ain't talking about a little bit, I'm talking fully illiterate. Like little kids trapped in a grown man's body. Acting a fool like Lindsay Lohan party. Like it's a party of your life, we party all night. Blackout, that's how we party it right. Hit the Walmart, cause we bored as shit. Instagram and upload the feed. <laughs> look, at, look at Rob hanging out in the Walmart for no reason. Just Instagram, and he got his phone out, walking around looking at himself like, hey, look at me, I'm walking through Walmart. It's so random, Rob. It's so random, but that's what we love. Random ramblings with random Rob. Ramblings. Random ramblings. Motherfucking random freaking ramblings. motherfucking random freaking motherfucking. Random ramblings. Random ramblings. Random ramblings. Blah, 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 blah. What up, everybody? This your boy, B-Rob, and I'm back with another edition of the Random Rounds with Rob podcast. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you, the listener, for coming back each and every week or however you listen to podcasts, you know, and I like to know what some of your rituals are whenever you listen to my podcast or any podcast that you listen to, because um, maybe you like to dress up as a pirate or, um, I don't know, uh, an alien or a sexy nurse or something like that. You know, you get in your Zen mood inside your head and you get comfortable, you know, when you listen to these shows. And if you're a first time listener, I'd like to know your ritual as well. I mean, also in the person that referred you to my show, if it was recommended to you um, this week, um, we have uh, I don't think. Out of the what this would be, 126 episodes out of all the guests I've had, I don't think I have ever had one cosplayer at all on the show except for izzy but he only cosplay as the same person over and over again so i don't know if that really count but this week my guest is alexis victorious how are you lady i'm doing well how are you i am okay um how this come about is i seen your wonder woman cosplay on twitter and i get to thinking to myself i was just like how did how did this whole ensemble come about? And I was just like, did she hand stitch this stuff by hand? Did she get on Google or eBay, or Amazon, and order it piece by piece? It, it was really bothering me because I really wanted to know how you you come about putting your costumes together and everything. I was just like, hey, why don't we get on the show? Why don't we talk about it? Because I'm I know I'm not the only one that's interested in how you um do these transformations and everything. Sure thing. Um, well, Wonder Woman is mostly um, EVA foam. So the foam that you see at the bottom of, on the floor is at uh, your local gym. Yeah, okay. She's mostly made out of that. And, you, like, is there a certain set of tools or whatever? You get, like, scalpels and all kind of scrapers or some things like that? Um, really, not really. It's just a, um, a good pair of scissors and an X-Acto knife um, to cut through the foam. And um, a heat gun to kind of move the foam and the shapes and stuff that you need it um, to make it kind of bend. And, yeah, that's mo- mostly what she's made out of. Uh, the, there are a couple extra materials that went into that one. Um, the the cups are made out of warbler, which is a heat-sensitive plastic. And it's all tied together in the back with um, fake leather and a corset that I cut up. 
all all that you you just said, I mean, you do this, you know, often, you know, this kind of this is your thing. This is what you do. But to me, just hearing all that stuff that you just said to, you know, put this ensemble together, I'm just like, fuck that. I just buy a whole outfit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I definitely thought about it. It, it would have been a lot easier to just buy it. But um, it was a co- it was a costume I was wanting to give a shot for a while. Um, I actually I, I started it a little bit after the movie came out. Um, and it's just, it was on my to-do list. So every now and then, instead of um, an easier costume, I like to challenge myself just to see if I can do it. And there have been co- some costumes that haven't made it to my Instagram feed, but. <laughs> but but do you do that often? It's just like you weigh the pros and cons of it. It's like, all right, I feel like I can make this outfit, vice, buying it in art. Has it ever been a situation to where, well, shit, I think it might be just easier for me to buy this outfit rather than to try to make it. Oh, for sure. There, um, most of my, um, all of my Spider-Man suits, um, uh, way easier to just buy it and cheaper to buy it than it is to, um, so all that. Yeah. Cause that looked like an intri- intricate project anyway. It's just like, it, and it depends on the variation of the costume that you're going to put together and everything. Cause I, I seen like, even if you go with the, um, original trilogy movie with, uh, Tobey Maguire or whatever the fuck his name was, that was like a lot of webbing design meshed into that outfit and try to do that by hand. That'd probably be a damn nightmare. Yeah. I mean, I've done it. Um, I've actually done that one for, um, one of my first Spidey suits. It's just a lot of puffy paint. Um, the, the paint that you use for um, kids' t-shirt projects. I, I was just about to say that. <laughs> yeah, it's that, but you just take your time <laughs> and on the entire suit. Now, um, how did we get here? I mean, when did you... Because, like, this is what I like to do. Is just, like, I see all these people on the internet, on Instagram and everything. They have these amazing talents, just like you do. But my question always is, at the same time, how do you discover that you possess this talent? I mean, is it something that was passed down to you? Is it just something that you acquired over time through trial and error? Where did this all start for you? Um, For me, it's definitely not something that um, I was born into. Uh, My uh, boyfriend in college um, actually got me into it. He um, makes the... um, His project that he was working on when we were um, in college was a stormtrooper suit um, instead of armor. Um, so I was a little interested. It, um, I just kind of, that was the first time I ever went to a convention and dressed up. I just bought like a Halloween costume and, um, went along with him, but it got me interested in seeing, in, in costly. I saw how much time and effort went into it, but I didn't actually start, um, really just kind of doing it on my own until a couple of years after college, um, I was just—I was honestly a little bit apprehensive, just kind of getting into putting myself out there. Yeah, and I can understand that because I mean, I, I speak about this all the time, you know, on this podcast. It was kind of the same thing. It took me a whole year to even build up the courage to turn on the microphone for the first time, and you know, you know, put myself out there, just like you said. Because I mean. Anytime you do something to where it's going to be exposed to the public eye or, you know, to the ears of the public, you know, you put yourself out there for, you know, criticism. So, I mean, it's a lot of getting over yourself, really, because you're the only one that's holding you back from doing anything. Exactly. Um, that's how I saw it when I, first, I decided to um, buy my first um, my first ever costume on uh, my Instagram account is my uh, Miles Morales costume. And that's was my whole mentality. I saw how much it was. I was like, you know what? If anyone at work sees this, it's not something that's going to get me fired. It's not something I'm embarrassed about. Let's do it. Yeah. Because, I mean, some people are kind of apprehensive of <laughs> outing themselves as a wrestling fan. Because like, oh, man, you watch that fake shit? You know it's fake, right? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, get tired of hearing that shit. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was nice at the time um, when I started doing cosplay, I was HR, so no one could give me too much shit about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, all right, we got the origin of the, you know, the aspects of you putting the costumes together and everything. I thought you was going to say you got bit by a radioactive seamstress or something and you got all these <laughs> sewing powers, but 
guess it didn't work out that way. So, I mean, how did you delve into this world? I mean, have you always been in the comic books or the just specifically the Spider-Man character and it just kind of branched out from there? Oh, yeah, definitely always been into comic books. Um, my grandmother actually has been collecting the Spider-Man comics um, since before I was born. So we have all those like from generations back. So I've always been interested in Marvel comics a little bit more than DC, but um, I've always been into comics. Um, I got really, really heavy into um, anime um, when I was in middle school. And things just kind of spiraled out of control from there. I really never grew out of being a giant nerd. It's just like, <laughs> I, I know what anime is, but <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's just me. I don't know if anybody has this particular affliction, but anytime I hear somebody saying anime, I think about Tina Turner on uh, in, um What's Love Got to Do With the Movie, you know, Eat the Cake anime. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. That, that's just a thing with me. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, I definitely, like, I definitely hear it, but, um, yeah, no, I grew up in a part of New York City where, um, there were a lot, everyone around, I grew up in the, um, the most Korean, um, <laughs> area of Queens, so everyone was kind of really into anime, um, growing up, so it was hard to avoid, it was, it was inevitable. So, I mean, do you still keep up with it, what you're watching now? Um, right now, I just started watching a, um, a c- series called Citrus on Crunchyroll. Um, it's, a, it's a lesbian anime. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. I'm two episodes in. Yeah, and that can be said for anything that you watch. Because, like, I was, uh, yeah. I was apprehensive about Queen of the South. Because everybody's like, oh, Queen of the South is shit. And I got past the first episode. And I was like, all right, this is all right. It kind of slow. It was kind of slow. Then about time third episode rolled around, it's like, all right, I'm all in. I'm ready for season three to come out. It's going to start Thursday. I actually don't watch that one. I should get into it. Yes, it's a recommendation from the Random Rounds of Throb. There you go. Seal of approval. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. I mean, you got to, um, like, I guess that, that gritty underlife or whatever, drug dealing and, you know, trying to run a legit business on top. I mean, isn't that what all, you know, drug related shows are you know hey i got all this dirty ass money let me go ahead and buy a laundromat <laughs> so i can uh launder it per se <laughs> yeah now, now what what didn't what gets you really excited about going to all these um festivals and everything and conventions and whatnot i mean what what's your favorite part of the whole experience i really love meeting other cosplayers it's um there's such a great sense of community at every convention that I've ever been to. And it's really, um, it's great, um, interacting with other fans of the series, but it's only when you meet another person who's spent 30 hours of their life, um, gluing, hot gluing foam together, um, to recreate a costume. Um, you have that shared sense of insanity and it's really just a great way. It's, I've made a lot of great friends and it's just fantastic. It's like, you're just like me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's so many parallels to like wrestling fans. It's it's the same exact way, man. It's just like I can go out here on the streets of Houston and I can just walk by somebody with a freaking AJ Styles shirt or a John Cena shirt or whatever. It's like, oh, you like wrestling? I like wrestling too. And then we'll just sit there <laughs> and we back and forth about wrestling all damn day. <laughs> and do you, nice. Do you do you ever find it hard, like to you know, you find somebody with a similar interest to you or whatever, or in a particular character, you maybe you even cosplay as the same um, person that you know you just sucked into that conversation. And it's kind of hard for you to just like stop. It's kind of like the old thing to where you're on the phone with somebody and be like, "You hang up now. Nah, you hang up. No, you hang up now. Nah, you hang up." <laughs> no, definitely. Um, every time I, um, especially if I run into another cosplayer and we're wearing the same costume um, and I've always ended up in like 30 minute, 45 minute long conversations of just like, Oh, so what did you do? What, what artist did you base your, did your, did you base yours off of? Did you base off a concept art or the one in the comic book and just um, going into materials and stuff like that. And then trading like contact information. Like here's my Instagram. No, here's my Instagram. Are you on Twitter? Or, like here's my Twitter. <laughs> so it's going to go off from there. Yeah. But, uh, I think that's like, if anything, I mean, it's a sense of accomplishment as far as the cosplay goes. Cause I mean, you know, you make everything by hand, you know, you, 
you're satisfied with the results at the end and, you know, you get to show it off and, you know, you get comments about it and everything. I mean, it's a great sense of accomplishment that I can, you know, I can understand, from, you know, maybe from your aspect of it or whatever, but to see the process, you know, through your eyes and then see the process from someone else's point of view or whatever, it's just, it's crazy. Cause like, all right, you said you did the, with the foam and everything, how you did your Wonder Woman outfit and somebody might have just went full on leather and actually seamed some shit together and did all kind of crazy junk. And it's just cool to like get those different takes and points of view. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've, I've actually met someone who's um, made their Wonder Woman costume, um, out of uh, fake leather completely and just kind of going into how they were able to get that much um, leather in the first place just to um, just to get to where they were and just kind of talking about their process. And um, we ended up in a whole conversation about how they like tan their own leather and Shit. <laughs> way more than I can do in my one bedroom apartment. Uh, yeah, that that's just <laughs> tan and hide and everything. Mm hmm. Now, how many conventions you say you may have been to? Um, honestly, I don't know how many I've been to. I've been going to conventions for a while, but I go to at least two major conventions every year now. Um, I just moved, so I'm still getting used to um, the new convention uh, schedule. This year, I think I have four major ones planned. Now... What what's the prep that goes into this? Because you got four of them planned, so like, all right, all right, job. I'm leaving this date, this date, this date, and then um, <laughs> I got to book a hotel. I mean, mm -hmm. how how taxing is this on the finances? Um, it depends. The local conventions usually I don't have to take any time off from work. It's just the weekend, so those um, my job would never know. Uh, for the big conventions that I fly out for, I gotta, um, get my tickets for however many days. Um, I, the next one I have coming up is San Diego Comic Con, so I have five days that I had, uh, had to take off. Um, so that's five days of hotel, uh, five days of the tickets alone, and then figuring out how to get all of my costumes from DC to San Diego is, um, I still haven't figured that one out yet, um, <laughs> but that's probably going to be at least one or two check bags. Oh, man. You ever thought about maybe shipping ahead? But then, damn, never mind, because, I mean, you're going to have somebody on the other side to receive it. So, yeah. Never mind. Scratch that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that night, I, I like to make sure that they definitely get to their destination I've, um, I've been on a flight before where they've lost my luggage so oh. I get a little nervous even when I check it you know and that's crazy because I mean that's essentially I mean that's that's your babies man I mean you, you put them together with all your time and effort and for a motherfucker just be out there throwing shit around like hey where my shit <laughs> yeah no I don't think that there's any I don't think that there's really I just gotta leave it to fate Say a prayer and hope that it comes out and on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, um, what's the most ridiculous outfit you've ever seen at any convention that you've ever been to? When I say ridiculous, I mean like just insane amount of effort put into it, materials, all kind of stuff like that. And the opposite end of that spectrum as well is just like no effort was made. He just motherfucker got a T-shirt on and some sweatpants and he painted a name on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the most insane one, it's, it's hard to pin that one down because every year, um, there's every convention, even there's like one that's more insane than the last, um, uh, Dragon Con in Atlanta is really, it's, uh, it's fucking absurd. Um, so you have actual like professional cosplayers or pro professional, um, prop makers who are making like suits of armor that are eight feet tall and have like a five, eight guy walking around on stilts and a completely covered from head to toe and you, and like foam and plastic. I've seen some great, um, world of Warcraft, um, armor. And so recently a lot of really great, um, overwatch, um, armor, um, the character Reinhardt. Um, but as far as the, um, not so impressive cosplay that I've seen. 
Uh, recently, the shitty cosplays have gotten uh, popular on Twitter and seeing kind of um, your best worst interpretation of a character in four panels. Um, has gotten popular at conventions too. So I've seen a couple of construction paper Iron Mans that have been <laughs> laughably bad, but it, I mean, that was, that's what they were going for. So I mean, I've, I've definitely seen a fair share of, um, on purpose bad cosplays too. Well, yeah, I guess that could be fun as well. Cause I, I think, um, there's an Instagram account. Is this guy that does it? I think is a low budget cosplay or something like that. Yeah. To where he <laughs> mimics the, I think I seen him with uh, grilled chicken strips on his face, trying to mimic a a character or whatever. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, no, it's really great seeing it in person because you really you don't have the reference photo next to him, so you're just like, "What the hell?" Yeah, matter of fact, I is got this it. guy? Yeah, yeah, I got it up here right now. It's a low cost cosplay on Instagram, and this dude has like spaghetti on his face, trying to look like an anime character. And it's usually always the anime characters because I mean those are always the hardest to to cosplay just because they're so ridiculous. Yeah, like right now I'm looking at him with a pack of cigarettes, a freaking a crayon, and some noodles, and he's uh, mimicking the big Titan on Attack on Titan. <laughs> <laughs> now that that's I'd like to get him on the show. I want to know what sparked that <laughs> in his head too. I'm just. I'm sorry. I'm laughing at all this stupid shit he got on this page right now. <laughs> oh no, I've I've seen his stuff. It's it's hilarious. I don't know um, what motivated him to do it, but I, I'm glad that he's doing it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You can't be mad at somebody that's doing some stuff like that because I mean, it makes me smile when I see this shit. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like I don't think that there's anyone um, doing it. You, any type of cosplay, whether it's great or not so great, um, that you really you have any negative feeling towards. Everyone's doing it from a place of love. Yeah. This dude got a hot dog over his face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, dis- I'm d- distracted right now. Let me put this <laughs> oh, man. All right. In, in addition to the, you know, the comic books and the freaking uh, cosplay and everything and the anime, what do you feel about movies? Like, what are your favorite genre of movies to watch? Uh, I really like um, a lot of the superhero movies that have been coming up. But, surprise, uh, surprise. I, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> it's a surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like every now and then, I, I'm a typical girl. I like watching a good rom-com every now and then. Have you ever seen um, one called uh, The Other Woman? I don't think I've seen that one. It's a good one. Look it up. I, I think I know more rom coms than you did. <laughs> <laughs> it's the other one. I don't know. I try not to. I try not to watch ones where um, it sounds like someone's gonna uh, be cheating on on uh, their significant other. I listened to Lemonade, and I was mad at my boyfriend for a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, this is that type of movie, but is it has the revenge aspect, and it's very comical. So, I mean, I think you might enjoy it. <laughs> okay. And then there's also uh, This Means War, which is another one. Is uh, two guys competing for the companionship of a young lady. And um, they go through war, essentially, with each other, trying to court her, which is another good one. It has Reese Witherspoon in it. I recommend that as well. And what else? I mean, I'm, I'm in the movie room. I'm trying to look around and see if I can give you some other recommendations. I mean, what have I watched recently? I can't even remember the last rom com I watched recently. I, I marathoned through Queer Eye on Netflix. That was definitely the last thing I've watched. The new season, the one that they brought back. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you watch it when it was originally aired? Um, a couple episodes. Yeah. I've always heard about it. I mean, I think that's like one of those uh, cultural things now. It's just like, you know, I mean, I I know of it because it was so popular, but I've never watched it. Fair. I mean, like the new, the old series, I'd say like they were kind of, it was campier. Mm-hmm. Um, they were definitely kind of playing up on the stereotypes a bit more. But the new series, um, it's more about bridging the gaps between people who um, agree and disagree with the lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So it's really interesting to see how things kind of play out. 
He said, why don't we just let people be people and not worry about it? Yeah, I mean, like, that's how it is at the end of the day. Like, we're all people. We're all here. We all have to put up with each other in yeah. one way or another. As long as you ain't hurting nobody or doing nothing illegal, you all right? <laughs> exactly. But, yeah. um, shit. Lost my train of thought there. <laughs> um, <laughs> fuck. I really lost it. God damn it. It's not like I had a train of thought to begin with. You know, it's just coming to me and I'm just saying what's in my head. So, guess I'm on track for the most part. Music. What are we listening to? Music? Oh, man. I've, I've just let Spotify take over lately. I haven't, I can't say that there's anything that stands out that's worth mentioning or that's not completely embarrassing. <laughs> um, I'm, um, I don't know. It's just like um, there's a podcast that I've been on a couple of times um, called um, Random Chatterings, very similar to the title of this show. And that's kind of how I wound up on it. I was like, hey, it's just like a convention thing. It's like, hey, I'm random. You're random. Let's talk. <laughs> and um, he has a thing to where the guests pick the background music for the show and um, they pick the outro song for the show. So with him. You know, he always asks me for the background music. And I, you know, I give him something that I had in my head, you know, I don't know, vanilla ice or something, just, just to be funny. So you hear that playing in the background while we're conversating. And then always the goddamn outro song is what gets me. It's just like, I, I tell him every time I go on my phone and I press shuffle, you know, I shuffle all the music and whatever comes up, that's the song that I give him. So last time I was on there, I think Adina Howard came up. Uh, you don't have to cry. Some old, slow, sappy R and B song or whatever. And I was just like, th- "This is gonna be my legacy <laughs> on this show." <laughs> and I think, I think before that, it was something else. It was just like, cause uh, I think it was just like way southern rap, like old Master P, No Limit type of thing. Some obscure shit, like heavy use of the N word and. His show is not like that at all. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. This is just what I got. This is random select. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you chanced it. That's that's what happens when you chance it. <laughs> yep, and it's just, but I mean, I think if I yeah, if I the last song I listened to was probably in Spanish, so not the most helpful. <laughs> what Despacito? <laughs> I mean, that's definitely on my um, on my cardio playlist. Does it get you pumped up? Does it get you going? It does. I mean, I I'm half Puerto Rican, so I mean, I'm really like oh. I, it's really exciting to see um, um, reggaeton get uh, as popular as it did for a bit. Oh, okay. So you actually understand the words and shit. So you kind of all right. I got you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Other than me, just like yeah, the dun, 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 that's a catchy beat. <laughs> Don't know what the fuck you're saying, but. <laughs> Yeah, no, um, I'm always the first, the um, only person of my friend's group, especially now that we've moved, um, that's teaching everyone how to salsa for the first time. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I bet that's a treat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I love it. it um, I, I mean, it, I grew up with it on my mom's side. I absolutely, 100% love it. Love the food and love the music. Yeah, there, there's a song that I've heard is in Spanish. It was on um what's that damn TV show? Freaking um Walter White. Breaking Bad. I heard it on there cuz it was dealing with um like some some Spanish people, you know, with the drugs and everything. And I heard this young lady rap this music and I was just like, I don't understand what the fuck you're saying, but it's like it sound bombed in the motherfucker. <laughs> and it's called <laughs> The name of the song is 1977, and uh, the girl's name is Ana. Something Spanish that I can't pronounce, but <laughs> if you can find it, I recommend it. Definitely look into it. 1977? Yes. Okay. If I had my iPad plugged up, I would play it. Oh, shit. I'm playing it now. Fuck. <laughs> Planeta Mercurio y el año de la serpiente 
You know, I think I definitely heard that one before. Don't know what none of that means, but it sound bomb as shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, I guess I make a little effort to learn the Spanish or whatever, because, you know, the work I do, I work in security. So I work in a lot of immigration courts in um, social security office and um, deportation offices and everything like that. So damn mm-hmm. majority of the people that come in there, especially here in Texas and Houston is a lot of, you know, Hispanic people. So I think I know enough Spanish to deal with whatever location that I'm working at. So if it's a social security office, I know just the right amount of words in there to d- get them to the right person that can help them do they, whatever they're trying to do. If it's the, um, ICE building, the deportation building. If they hear, they either here to do one or two things. And if I can get one of those two key words out of that whole thing that they spitting at me, I'm like, all right, I know what you're here to do. You can do go that way. <laughs> Fair. There are a lot of words growing up that I didn't even realize um, there was an English counterpart for uh, growing up. Mostly everything in the kitchen. I had no idea that there was an English word for most things in the kitchen growing up until I got to like it's a second grade. Yeah, and that's that's crazy. It's just like I think the last episode I even brought it up. It's just like language, just language in itself. It doesn't matter what language it is. It's like who was the motherfucker to sit there and be like, "This word is this word from here on out." And I'm just like, "Damn, it's just all right." Because like uh, I think what I'm I'm probably saying it all wrong, wrong dialect, whatever the fuck. But tarjeta to me, that's card. In Spanish. So if, mm-hmm. if I hear that in the sentence at the Social Security office, I know they're here to get a Social Security card. So I'd be like, oh, all right, Tarjeta, go over there. They'll get you the Social Security card. But anything other than that, and I'm like, uh, and <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was funny about it. It's just like I catch on and I get them to the right place. And then automatically they think I speak full on Spanish. And I'm just like, no, 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 <laughs> no, Paquito, Paquito. <laughs> Yeah, no, that definitely happens. Um, I lived in Florida for a while, so I mean, um, it's, Florida is basically fifty-fifty English and Spanish. So it's hard to um, communicate to someone after uh, a while. They're like, "Oh no, 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 I'm not that fluent. Yeah. Not that fluent. I can get you to where you need to go, but that's about it." Yeah, and especially like here in Houston, I found <laughs> I found myself. I called it Little Mexico because um, we just moved to the um, area that we live here now. And um, my wife was like, the boy need a haircut. And I usually when she say the boy need a haircut, I got to go find a barbershop to take him to. So I didn't know the area very well. And she just Googled random barbershop. And she figured, you know, being stereotypical, she figured since the barbershop that she found online spelled uh, what I think it was a uh, Clipper Boys. Since the boys had a Z at the end, she assumed it was black. <laughs> So, so I go there. Yeah, I, I get the directions and everything. I'm driving. I'm taking my boy there, and then slowly but surely, the neighborhood starts to transform from where I live at to where we're going. And I'm starting to see Spanish signs. I'm starting to see, you know, a lot of Spanish people walking around. And I'm just like, I, I swore I heard the cucaracha somewhere in the background, and I was like, fuck. Where the hell am I? Then I get to the barbershop and we go in there. It's nothing but Hispanic people. I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> this is where I'm at. And then, I mean, it doesn't bother me or whatever, but it was just like, I didn't know if I was going to sit in there and be trying to say fade in Spanish or, or you know, <laughs> taper. I don't know. <laughs> but um, my son uh, like it there. He like he, he got his hair cut from, the, from a lady. He's like, I like this place. I want to come back. So we've been going there ever since. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, whenever I find, whenever um, I'm in a new area, I have to find a new um, salon. I always make sure to try to find um, a Dominican salon because they're the only. They're not the only, but um, they've always been best at handling my hair texture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how do you feel about stereotypes? Are are they spot on? Or are they just kind of half true? Um. I mean, I don't think that every stereotype is true. I think that definitely, like, some stereotypes definitely spawn 
from Truth, but I'm I grew up in such a weirdly diverse area. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh not many people um not many um half black, half Hispanic people grow up in little Korea, but um Yeah, that's like <laughs> that's a whole nother world. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, um I've definitely I've gotten to meet a lot of different people. I've seen which stereotypes are true, I've seen which stereotypes um, people are cool with, I've seen which stereotypes piss people off. So I mean, I think it all depends on which stereotype you're talking about. Yeah. And I don't know, it's just like I never really went through that because, like, all right, my parents are 86 and 76 right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, doing the math, I mean, you figured they lived through all that, you know, the segregation and all that, you know, where racism was like really high. So, you know, knowing that, um, I was never really raised like that in the house. You know, it was never a talk of, you know, you know, oh, white people are the devil, and, you know, this and that and the third. You know, it was never really forced upon me to, like, you know, just play with your own kind and nothing like that. And, you know, they sent me different places to where I would deal with, you know, other races of kids, you know. So mm-hmm. they they never really, you know, took what they've been through and kind of, like, put that on me, you know. I mean, I understand what we've been through, but it wasn't like, you know, it was pounded into my head every day it was just like basis of it was just like people are people you know treat people right and you know hopefully they'll do the same yeah i definitely get that um my parents were both born in the 60s so um my dad moved to the u.s like really right um when segregation was ending but because i was one of the only one of the few black kids in school um he always took a moment took time to make sure that I knew everything about um, the civil rights movement and that um, he started me off with like the cartoon version of um, Martin Luther King Jr.'s story. And when I was older, then he taught me about um, Malcolm X, but he was, um, he definitely experienced um, a fair, a good deal of discrimination in the U S he was stopped by a cop one time for being in the wrong neighborhood when he was growing up. I think he was 20 something. But, um, yeah, no, he got beat up by a cop just for being in the white neighborhood before. So yeah. he definitely wanted to make sure that I had a solid base of yeah. understanding. Yeah. And, you know, man, I mean, going through something like that, I mean, it's kind of hard to like, you know, I don't know. I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just like, all right, this, I've been through this. You know, it's kind of hard not to hold that against people, you know, but you got to understand that, like, every person isn't that one fucked up person that you had that encounter with. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think he his um, what he wanted to instill is just that there's a possibility that um, someone's not showing their true colors yeah. off off the bat and that you just have to be a little bit wary. And granted, we grew up in New York City, so. Like, you can't trust a stranger in New York City. Yeah. I mean, I, I've known that and I've been, I've was born and raised in Louisiana. And I was always like, freaking New York is the seedy underbelly of crime and shit, you know? <laughs> it's just like, that's where all your superheroes hang out. That's where they save all the people. Yeah, that's, that's where we need them the most. <laughs> mm-hmm. But like, um, what was it? It's just damn. The only thing that kind of shined through or whatever is just like from that, because like I, I know my parents have been through that, you know, in their younger years. Like um, I'll call now my mom about my kids. Be like, oh, how the kids doing in school? And I was like, all right. Uh, she having a little bit. My daughter's having a little bit of trouble in this class. And she'd be like, is the teacher white? <laughs> I was like, what the fuck that got to do with it? <laughs> you know, but, you know. I mean, it's just a normal part of conversation. It doesn't even phase me. I just, but I, in my head, I'm just like, mom, just, just, it, if she, my kids, I'm just like, if she fucking up, it's on her. <laughs> <laughs> and then now, um, I think other than that, I think the only one time, the only blaring thing of where I think my mom may have held a grudge <laughs> one, one time or two is just like, um, I was, 
getting up there in age. I was about to get out of high school. And, you know, I started showing interest in girls and stuff. And um, my mama was like, she's just like straight up. She's like, I don't care who you love. It's as long as you don't bring a white woman home to my house. And I was like, what? Oh. <laughs> I said, that's contradictory in your statement. That's <laughs> And I was like, what the fuck, mom? But my dad was never like that. He never even, the only thing he like, he would show me Roots when it was on TV. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, you know, he would, um, you know, be like, be careful when you go here and do this and whatnot. <laughs> but he was just chill and laid back. Yeah, thankfully my parents, um, my parents never said anything like that. And I'm actually, I'm in a relationship with someone um, who's half Colombian and half Jewish. <laughs> that's that's a combination. Yeah, I mean, and I like it's that. a weird one, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I kind of wanted to be a world to where like that's not uncommon, you know? Yeah. But when you hear about something like that, it's just like. I mean, all right, it's like, how did this person get from way over here to way over here and make this happen? (laughs) Yeah, no, I mean, um, his Jewish side comes from Russia. So, I mean, like, I don't, if if we did the 23 Me, I really, um, between the two of us, I'm pretty sure that none of our continents would even light up the same way. And, you know, it's just like, I guess I I really believe in things, uh, you know, meant to be you know, the way they are meant to be. It's just like, cause all right, I was born and raised in Lake Charles, Louisiana. My wife was born and raised in Danville, Virginia. You know, two States are nowhere that are nowhere near each other. And then mm-hmm. through, you know, life and, you know, a, you know, a strange series of events, we wind up in one place at one time to be together for what going on 10 years now. And, you know, it's just like, yeah, it makes you really think about life. It's just like, all right, what if I took that left at Albuquerque instead of going right? And, you know, will we still be at this point, you know? So, I don't know. It's, it's just like people who have bad experiences but come out on the other end and you ask them, hey, um, would you go through all that again to be here? And they'd be like, hell yeah. You know, I like where I'm at, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I've I've been with him now for seven years, and if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be doing cosplay. So, yeah, see, it was meant to be, and you didn't have to get <laughs> bit by a radioactive seamstress. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, as as far as technology goes, I mean, what what are you into? I mean, are you just like one of these people that come up with your designs on your tablets or anything, or your phone, or are you just like a pen and paper type person, pencil? I'm a big pen and paper person. I I like getting an I I like feeling the design in my hand before I do it, and just um, before I transfer any of my designs, I have to cut them out from paper anyway. So it just it seems like the easiest thing to start off with. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, from the time that you actually put, you know, y- your efforts into you know designing your costumes and everything like that. How much has the technology that you have at your disposal changed? You know, it has, is there a lot of things that you use now that wasn't really accessible to you, you know, whenever you first started doing your costume designs and putting things together? Definitely. Um, I wasn't using Warbla when I first started, um, and so, that's the um, heat-sensitive oh. plastic. Oh, okay. Um, so that's changed a lot. That I've, That's opened a lot of um, possibilities. As far as cosplay goes, um, I didn't have a sewing machine when I started, so <laughs> that's nice to have one now. Well, I mean, did, so you, did you just, was it just hand and stitch? It was a lot of hot glue. Oh. <laughs> and you know what? It's just like, I've been, over these past couple of years, because like, um, you know, I, I separated from the military about two years ago, but, you know, the past, you know, two years or whatever that I've been out, it's just been you know, a rediscovering of myself. And it's just like, there's so many things that I want to do now that I wasn't really 
focused on when I was in the military. It's just like, I see, I know what I want and I want to try to do those things myself. So I don't have to rely on anybody else to do it for me. Like even small mm-hmm. shit, just like I, I had a backpack and I, well, I had a couple of backpacks that damn, it had um, chargeable batteries on the inside. So you can plug your accessories into it and charge your shit on the go. But Mm -hmm. every one of them that I had, they were made too goddamn small. So like the laptop I had would would fit in there like exactly or be just too damn big at all. Or damn, you know, I just couldn't fit whatever I wanted into my bag. And I found myself one day just sitting on YouTube looking how to make a motherfucking backpack. (laughs) No sewing experience whatsoever. I'm just sitting here. I'm like. All right, I just got to find some material and get a sewing machine. Now, just like I'm thinking about how outlandish this sounds in my head as I'm looking at these videos, and I am sit here and make a motherfucking backpack. <laughs> I just need to find a good one, you know. But I'm slowly trying to eliminate can't or you know from my vocabulary, and you know I'm trying to really you know put that on my kids as well. It's just like. I want you to at least try something before you say you can't do it. And I've, you know, in me saying that to them, you know, I had to practice what I preach. So I went from as far as music goes, talking about all these, you know, how everybody's on the mumble rapper train. Now it's like, oh, these mumble rappers are trash and shit like that. I was in the beginning, but I've slowly uh, changed my stance on that. You know, I understand that some of the music isn't good. You know, it's not to my liking. That's what it is. I mean, either you like something or you don't like it. And, you know, I don't like all of it. So instead of me saying this whole genre of music is trash, I look at it at a ah, I can't talk. I look at it from the perspective of, well, I'm not producing anything better. I'm not making any better content. So who am I to be like, Well, you're trash because this person is actually whether their motivations is to make good music or, you know, attempt music. They're actually putting forth an effort to do something, you know, and I'm not doing anything at all. So that's just kind of how I look at it now. So before I actually say a motherfucker is garbage, I need to prove to myself that, hey, I can lay down a mixtape or produce an album or make beats or some shit before I can make that claim. Yeah. Yeah, so I ain't gonna say motherfucker that making cosplay is trash if I ain't sat down behind a sewing machine or hot glued some shit together, <laughs> or, you know, you know, immerse myself in the process to see how difficult that shit is. And if they come out with some kind of decent stuff, I'm just like, well, damn, <laughs> that's leaps and bounds ahead of what the fuck I tried to do. Yeah, I mean, I, I looked at, I kind of. Before I started doing cosplay, I looked at a lot of things with a lot more of a critical eye, and um, I would look at some cosplayers um, and kind of say, like, oh, well, that doesn't, like, look exactly right or doesn't seem to, like, fit the right way. And then I started working with foam for the first time, and I realized, like, this fucking thing is impossible to get the way, <laughs> to get it to work the way I want it to. And then it was, a, it was a lot of trial and error, but then I immediately, like, I took back everything I said about um, other cosplayers not getting things exactly right or not getting things to fit exactly the right way because I realized having done it that like this is a bitch to work with and there are some people who like turn out new cosplays um, like right after a new trailer drops so they'll turn something out in like 48 hours and like I I just I have so much respect for people who are able to do that. Those people amaze me it's just like we can get a 30 second trailer or whatever. And, you know, you can barely see anything. You just see a, a motherfucker fly across the screen and they'll dissect that 30 second clip and, you know, render a whole outfit off of still images. They'll break that clip down frame by frame and get every nuance and freaking inseam and all that shit and turn out a costume. And that shit just as am- amazes me, you know, yeah, no, it's it's it. I'm definitely not at that level yet. It's insane. Um, the people who can do those things. I was just happy that I could um, point out the type of Nikes that um, 
the new Spider-Man is wearing. <laughs> yeah, and how excited are you for that Into the Spider-Verse? Very excited. Um, usually um, when people ask me about my first uh, cosplay and I say Miles Morales, they don't know who I'm talking about. So I'm so happy that people are going to finally know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, and I've come to know this character. I mean, not through reading comic books and everything, but just hearing the name, the name value of the character is, you know, presented itself to me and so i know who it is just off of that alone and then um i think even donald glover has showed interest in playing that character for over so many years or whatever so that's kind of how i come to know it as well yeah no i mean i would have i would love to see him um as uh take the uh spider mask at some point um what's great is that um in the new movies, Homecoming, he's the uncle um, yeah. of Miles. Um, whether or not we'll get a live-action version of Miles Morales, we don't know yet. But um, there's at least that connection um, to Donald Glover and the Miles Morales character. Yeah. So that's exciting. I, I think that was kind of like a compromise. It's like, all right, dude, we're going for something young. You're not particularly young. And so yeah, we just, we'll throw you this bone. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm hoping that at the very least, like, maybe he gets the opportunity to voice an older Spider-Man or something later in lo- later down the line. Yeah, yeah and I'm down with that. <laughs> now, the, um, what was I about to say? Um, got anything you're looking forward to in the future as far as movies go? I'm really looking forward to Aquaman, actually. Um Aquaman's exciting. Um, they're filming Wonder Woman two, yes. um, not too far from where I live now. What? So, tell me, you gonna get up in your car cosplay garb? You just gonna try to wander around set or whatever, and hopefully you get mistaken for Gal Gadot, and then you get some screen time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they'd let me that close to the movie set, but I definitely I've tried. I was downtown um, when they were filming a scene. And they had everything blocked off, and I was just kind of trying to make my way past the the barriers. It's like, oh no, I just want just one photograph, just one just one autograph. And like, they're like, no, no, keep walking. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, uh, have you ever um, tried to you know pursue acting or anything like that, or try to be in any movies? No, I've never um, tried acting seriously. I was in um, theater when I was in high school, but. That's really where my acting career started and ended. <laughs> I've, yeah, I, it's just not something that I saw happening for me. I don't even want to be like a main character or even have like a ass load of speaking roles. I just want to be a motherfucker on camera, just kind of like wandering around aimlessly and shit. <laughs> that definitely would be fun. I think. I mean, if there if. I didn't have my job to worry about. There are some, um, there, they are look. they were looking for some extras in the DC area for Wonder Woman. Oh, shit. So that would have been exciting. Yeah. See, and, and you know, that's, that's all I really want. I mean, yeah. I mean, everybody may have dreams and ambitions of being a big Hollywood star, you know, headline blockbuster movies and premieres and everything like that. I just want to say I was in a movie. That's all I want to do. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't if as long as you feed me, I mean, you ain't really got to give me too much money. I mean, all money at all. I mean, just give me some food and just put me on the camera for a little bit and I'll be satisfied with that. Now, honestly, that's how I am with a lot of um, cosplay appearances, um, especially with um, San Diego coming up. I'm just happy to be invited to um, the panels and the parties that I'm invited to. I'm just happy to be fed and have an open bar to myself. So, that's really all I need. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to do something that might seem a little weird because I just got a sponsor and I'm going to kind of okay. talk to you about it. And we just going, you know, just general conversation. Um, we t- we spoke about music earlier or whatever. And um, do you use that kind of it at any fashion to, you know, whenever you creating a project or anything like that do you listen to music while you have that on the background or anything like that i know i just said a whole bunch uh, of shit but <laughs> no absolutely i always um listen to music when i'm working on something do you use headphones 
I do. Yeah. What, what kind of what, what's, what's the brand you're using? Is it just like some run of the mill Walmart stuff or what is it? Um, I think I'm, right now I'm using my um, the iPhone headphones until they die out on me. Is it um, the wired ones or the earbuds? Oh, they're the wired ones. Okay, yeah, because I, I, I'm kind of iffy on them earbuds, man. I've I seen, I seen them out in the wild or whatever every now and then. You know, I'm running the security point, and somebody put them in a the little, you know, the little bowl or whatever to pass through the x-ray machine. I'm just like, how do you like these? And they're like, it's cool, you know, you need to charge in the case. I mean, I think that's the only quality everybody likes about these headphones from every person that I asked and that I've seen them with. They'd be like, yeah, I like that you can stick them in a the thing and you can charge them or whatever. He's like, but they're real easy to lose because, you know, it's just this little thing, you know? Yeah, no, I'd be really, I'm, I see them every now and then and I'd be really worried about them just kind of popping out while you're walking. Yeah, because, I mean, I've had this trouble too, but, you know, not so much lately since I have these uh, studio headphones. Is um the people who sponsor the show? They sent me um a pair of Regent headphones. It's like over the ear, kind of like um what what your, um your solo beats are. They're a little bit smaller than that, but you know I got them in the mail the other day and I tried them on. You know, crisp quality sound and everything. I mean, I sound like an infomercial, man. I'm about to get up in here and be like, and for 19.95, you can just call in now and you get two pairs. For- <laughs> But yeah, I mean, there's some good headphones. And um it's just like I've had beats and um currently I'm on the fuck you beats train right now because I done had two <laughs> pair, I done paid all this goddamn money for them and the fucking the ear cups that come off their rip, goddamn the little band that goes over the top of your head, the little plastic, the cushioning part will peel off, and the goddamn beats is a piece of shit. I'm saying it. Go on the record. <laughs> sue me. God damn it. No, don't sue me. I, re- I really can't afford it. <laughs> I just bought a house. <laughs> but uh, what studio is doing is um making fine, affordable products and everything that everybody can enjoy, which, you know, Mrs. B-Rob, my wife, she's just like, just give me some damn headphones so I can listen to whatever the fuck I, I want to listen to. But um, I let her play with these out of the box and she put them on and she actually had some good shit to say about it. She wasn't just like, oh, this is just a regular fucking set of headphones. This is just like, oh, it, it's rich sound. She, you know how those people, <laughs> they'll talk about um cigars and shit like that. It's just earthy tones mm-hmm. and s- the smells of cinnamon and all kind of shit, which if you find a cigar with cinnamon in it, that's probably not a good cigar. But you get what I'm saying. Um and she just had this glowing review about the headphones and I was just like wow if they can turn her around it this must be some good shit <laughs> so no I'll definitely um, check them out I mean I my, I, I expect the uh, iTunes the iPhone headphones are going to die out on me soon anyway so yes so if you do happen to check it out I know I didn't bombarded you with a whole bunch of information about some fucking headphones um, if you go to studio.com that's S-U-D-I-O and use the promo code 3R show you get 15% off your order and they ain't got a set of headphones on, on there that's um, more than $106 so I mean I think the lowest right. ones start out at 79 and they're all Bluetooth and all you can use auxiliary cord and um, shit you get 15% off if you use the promo code Nice. I'll definitely check it out. Yeah. And if you don't, at least I made the effort to convert you. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, in closing, we're going to go ahead and wrap this thing on up. I know you got some things to sew up and everything, some crime to fight, some movies not to be in. So um, <laughs> where can everybody find you on social media so they can see the outstanding work that you do? Uh, well, I'm most active on Instagram, and my handle there is Alexis Victorious. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook at um, Alexis Victorious Cosplay. Or if you want to um, get an idea of um, my everyday thoughts, you can find me on Twitter at Yes, This Is Alexis. All right. We'll get that out there and to the world. And I really hope that everybody. Um, you know, enjoys the work that you're putting out there because it's amazing. I mean, it's better than any shitty backpack that I can put together. <laughs> <laughs> but-
But um, hey, I'm sure with enough practice, you could do it. Yeah, I, you know, like I said, I mean, I'm not saying that I can't do it. I'm just saying it's going to be subpar than a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate your time. You know, I really dig the work that you're doing. And um, and if you love what you do, I mean, I wish you nothing but the best in whatever it is that you decide to do with it here on for it. Thank you. And thank you for having me on. And that was Alexis Victorious. Go ahead and um, look her up on Twitter and Instagram and just follow the process, follow the journey. I, I feel that she is just going to get better and better at her craft, at her skill and whatnot. And, you know, I hope y'all enjoy the ride. Yep. Man. <laughs> um, sponsored by Studio Headphones or whatever. I mean, I just, just like I was telling her, man, it, you know, when we were off air, it was just like, I felt weird doing that. I mean, the product is good. You know, the headphones are awesome. I, you know, I can't speak, um, from the time, from the time that I got them out the box and actually got some hands on, you know, putting them on my ear holes and listening to some music and whatnot. I mean, I was thoroughly impressed by the headphones. And, um, you know, if you're in the market for a set of headphones, I done said headphones like 80 times. It's like, that's the um, secret word on Pee Wee's Playhouse headphones. Ah! But if you're in the market, go to studio.com. That's S U D I O.com. And, um, use the promo code three R show. Get your 15% off. I'm probably looking into getting, um, their Bluetooth. They got some uh, Bluetooth earbuds. On there that I'm eyeballing and everything. I, 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 I'm showing some interest in that. I might have to cop me a pair, but, um, cool, man. See, I mean, there it is. Th- this was random at its finest. Like no shit. Um, I think last week sometime, um, I just pulled up Twitter on my phone and boom, there she was, you know, in a Wonder Woman outfit. And, um, she was talking about how uh, that, that was her first attempt. And, you know, she's kind of apprehensive about, um, you know, making the outfit and everything. And, you know, it came out damn good. And I was just like, you know what? I mean, I'm interested in what goes into to cosplay, you know, the process, you know, getting the materials and, you know, how they come up with the idea in their head and everything. So, I mean, that's why I reached out. And she, she, her, this, this young lady actually responded to an email that's crazy right i mean i've been going through it through the life of this goddamn show trying to get motherfuckers to reply to motherfucking emails you know it's just damn i you know i've said this multiple times i said this many times we now in this day and age are so connected through technology. You know, you know, we have so much technology at our disposal from phones to tablets, you know, Xboxes, PlayStations. There's multiple ways that we can get in contact with each other and almost instantaneously. And now email is kind of by the fucking wayside. Motherfuckers don't check their goddamn email. I done sent tons and tons of emails to many of people, even people that I know that I'm going to send emails to. They're like, hey, man, I'm going to send you this email later. You know, just be looking for it. And they know that I'm sending them the goddamn email and they don't fucking know to check their shit. They just don't check their shit. This, this is how email is like falling off. So, I mean, what's the next best thing? I mean, I mean, you could text a motherfucker and everything like that. I guess you could send Dropbox links and all this other cool shit. But email, man, just answer your shit. Even if you're going to tell me no, just tell me no. Don't have me sitting here by a string and shit just hanging on where it was just like, oh, I wonder if they're going to contact me. And you know what? I understand if you're busy. I understand that. You know, life, you got shit to get out of get done. But damn, you not check your email at all, then what's the purpose of you having a motherfucking email? If you don't check your email frequently or you don't use your email at all, don't post the shit anywhere for people to see and use to contact you by your motherfucking email if you're not going to use the shit. You sorry bastards. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's how I feel about that. But anyway, once again, great guests, great show. 
And I'm going to do the outro. If you want to get in contact with me, you can do so on Twitter at it's B Rob. That's I T S B R O B. If you want to talk professional wrestling and any other general shenanigans, that's the place you do it. I also host this show that you're listening to and you can follow the show's Twitter at three R show. And if you're hip and trendy, you can follow at three R show two. That's T O O. Um, you can follow me on Instagram to where I walk the hollowed halls of Walmart. I mean, more so than it's posted on Instagram, but Hey, I'll get back into it. Um, check me out on, um, IGTV. I just did a video there, um, Sunday. Why not? It was the first time I used my green screen and my camera set up on that. Um, I thought it came out pretty good. It could be a little bit better. I'll probably work on something else, uh, this weekend or whenever I can get the chance to, but, um, I thought it was pretty fun. You know, I, what I solicit from you, the audience, the people that are listening to me right now, uh, some, maybe some topics that I can speak about, or if you have any questions that I can address, you know, shoot them my way. Send me a DM. You can do it on Twitter on the places I just missed it or, or Instagram. Um, you can go to randomrobcast.com to where you can find different ways to help support the show, where there be shopping with Amazon links. You just click on it, take it to Amazon, you buy some stuff, I get some kickback. You don't have to pay nothing extra. Um I have merchandise which I'm working on trying to do some new shit. Um there's a Amazon wish list if you want to buy equipment for the show. You can do that. If you want to just give me money straight up, there's PayPal links. Or if you want to be a patron to the show like Brandon McIntyre, Glenn Abbott and King Ajar, you could do so all through randomrobcast.com but you know that monetary stuff it's not a requirement you know you don't have to give me a dime of your money just to be a fan of the show but what I do ask the most important thing that you could do for this show or any other show that you listen to write a review preferably five stars but anything that you can give free of your time is just that would be appreciated. Reviews, liking, subscribing, retweeting, all those things count in the long run. You know, the money would be fun to have. It would be nice, but hey, it's not required. You know, if, <laughs> if I don't know, I don't even know where I was going with that thought. You know what I'm saying? If it was like an ass load of money, I, I highly doubt I'd be doing it, but like enough for it to sustain itself, that would be awesome. But once again, once again, that's why we have sponsors. That's why we have studio. That's why we have hooks, rubs, and spices. Through your reviews, your likes, your comments, your retweets, your interaction with the show, that's what's going to help us in the long run. And I appreciate each and every one of you for interacting. Those of you who have retweeting, leaving comments, hearting my shit on Instagram, you know, giving me genuine feedback. I appreciate that the most from you all. And yeah, you're fucking awesome. Um, I don't know. That's it. I think I've ran out of stuff in my brain housing group to speak about, you know, shout out to Hooks, Rubs and Spices, another sponsor of the show. If you go to Hooks, Rubs and Spices on Etsy.com, you can get 10% off your order. Um, I just had a Hooks, Rubs and Spices giveaway. I got two winners that I, um, I just picked at random. They tweeted me pictures of their delicious uh, barbecued meats and things so they won them some hooks rubs and spices so boom i had to get that out there in the mail to them hopefully i can get it out soon so they can enjoy it over their fourth of july holiday on the grill and whatnot so thank you thank you for participating and sharing your delicious foods that i couldn't have not a nibble or a morsel of so yeah that's it appreciate you all for listening and i'll see you next time Your face is coming straight to your ears A podcast network that's changing gears Bringing fresh funky pods with a fresh funky beat A family of pods that are bringing the heat There ain't no stopping us Keep coming back to us Sick ass pods that'll make you hush www.hushyourface www.hushyourface www.hushyourface.com